If you've clicked on this video, what you're interested in is the problem set. Now, I understand that the problem set may have caused a little bit of confusion at the beginning as to what you've got to do and how and when. I think that was a little bit of my fault due to the timing uh, of uh, when it started, which caused a bit of stress for some people. But having said that, I just want to go through how simple it is and how we're going to do it, okay, so that you're, you're super clear. So let's have a look uh, at what is actually involved in the problem set. So you can, I'll leave you to go through this document in more detail yourself, but essentially you have two things to do. You have to prepare an answer and then review it. Now, it should be done in class with peers. That's the design. Um, however, there will be some time afterwards, after the class, where you can work on it yourself. If you miss a class, you can theoretically do this on your own if you're reviewing the material. Okay, so, but it's prepare, review, once you've been through it with your tutors and discussed it with classmates. Um, can you use AI? No, right, because this is your work. Also, from a practical perspective, this would be a bad use of AI in terms of preparing you for the exam. It's much better. These are the kinds of questions you're going to get in the exam. So we're preparing you for it. Okay. Um, and so therefore we want you to do this on your own. How is the grading work? Okay, so grading is on the reflection, not your initial answer. Let me repeat that. Grading is based on the reflection, not the initial answer. Okay, so you don't need to stress about taking a super intensive effort in the preparation of your answer for the tutorial. 15 minutes to maybe half an hour looking at the question, trying to come up with your answer, right? That's all you need. Because in the tutorial, we go through it and you can correct what you got wrong. And we look at what your end point is. Have you correctly identified everything that needs to be identified in the problem? Have you demonstrated you know how to answer this problem? Okay. That's what we're doing. Simple five mark uh, scale for how well you've done that. And to try and help us do that, I thought I would do the problem set 5-1. Um, hopefully, you won't just copy this, right? Because I'm not going to do it completely so that it can't be copied. But I thought it would be useful for you to see, okay, what are our expectations? What are we actually looking for? First things first is you actually need to get the problem set. Okay, so here is the problem set week five. Notice the problem set has the problem for the portfolio, the coffee company problem with the question. Then there's some supplemental problems. The supplemental problems. I'm sorry if this wasn't clear, but to me, supplemental is clear. Mm -hmm. Supplemental means extra, right? We do these so that you can practice for the exam. Maybe your tutor wants to show you a specific point around a, a, an aspect of the material. So these are supplemental. You do not have to prepare anything for the supplemental answers. You concentrate on the portfolio problem. Okay, so let's just say you've done that.
So what we have here is a kind of a, a pretend answer that I made up. Now, don't use this answer because I made errors in it. I didn't do it properly, etc. So we'd get a sense of how this exercise works. Right. So I'm looking at this problem and I've written, look to have a contract. You need these three things. Got to have offer. I've said look, intent's pretty clear. They're in business. Consideration is fairly clear. And then I type it up into a kind of formal, more formal document. For there to be a contract, there's got to be a treatment, con intent, consideration. I go through intent. I go through consideration using the ILAC form. Agreement was their offer and acceptance. Um, and if you read this, you'll realize I make an error in agreement. And you'll also see, for instance, that I miss entirely any discussion of enforcement when the question was about uh, an, enforce an enforceable contract. And I don't do that at all. So what I now have to do is say, look, how would I change this? Personally, if I were doing this, I would print this out and then handwrite any changes. And then it's very clear what I'm adding. Take a picture and upload that. And that's it, right? A picture of this document with handwritten annotations about what I'd change about this answer or what I like about this answer as well, right? If I'm going to do it all electronically, which is possible, I would actually use the review, right? And I would make sure I track changes, yep. And I would want to show all markup, right? So what does this do? Um, I can mark this, yeah. I can add something in or I can put a comment and go, this was wrong. I missed the termination in the rejection comment, right? I can look at this and go, comment, yes. This was correct, yep. And essential to show I know what is necessary for a contract. Okay. I can go down here in commercial transactions, presumed intent to be legal bound. In this case, the agreement was commercial. It's between a coffee sailor and, and I can again say, you know, this was an excellent answer. You know, this was an excellent answer with all the details required. Hit the law we use. I'm going to put an asterisk because for all the law students, you know what I'm talking about. All we use uh, and application. That's good. Right? Uh, consideration, was there sufficient consideration? You know, there's no real, really good case. That case is relevant because it's not, it's really about do we have enough consideration? That's the problem. Uh, CC promised to pay and his promises to deliver in a specified time. There's sufficient consideration. Um, so again, this kind of depends upon when I see the contract as occurring. If I change my mind and think the contract occurs um, upon, I don't know, uh, the confirmation, um, I might want to say that in this point, right? When... Or uh, if I didn't think that, and you can see how that's clearly marking up my addition, so I know what I've addition. Or maybe I thought it happened when the deposit happens and uh, paid the deposit. And we will also know that the contract occurs when they pay $18, right, and pay the deposit. So if that's where I think it occurs, I can, I can now change this answer right and then go here look uh, this was generally good uh, the only problem was i got the agreement time wrong right 
So I've said, look, I got that right. I got that right. I got that right. Here, I can say, ooh. Okay, so what 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 actually happened here? So if we read the case, there's kind of two views as to where the contract forms. But what is clear is it doesn't um, occur here because that acceptance occurs after it's been rejected, like the price is too steep. So I missed the rejection of the $17 offer, right, by um, Ben or CC. Right? So that means the acceptance offer by Ben. Then there is the counter offer by HIS at $18. This is what is accepted by Ben. Or He actually does a new price and says, oh, I want product. So if you say that's so significant, it amounts to a counter offer, uh, then it occurs on HIS confirmation. So I've clearly identified what I got wrong in this. Um, so I was right, there was agreement, but incorrect about when it occurred because I missed the rejection by Ben of the HIS $17 price counteroffer. So I've clearly identified right, what I got wrong in this part. And if I change that and got that right, I actually have the law about counteroffer. I got acceptance when it communicated to me, that fixes that problem. Then my only other problem is I didn't do enforceability. Yeah? I totally missed enforceability. And I'm not going to write anymore because you got to think about this and deliver it. But all I now need to do is to upload that document, right? And so we're reading it going, yeah, you, you know what you got right and wrong. And we can very quickly say, look, that would be if I do enforceability reasonably well, that's five marks, right? That's five out of five. So you don't have to get the answer right. What, what you have to do is make sure that your correction of the answer addresses all of the key points that there are in a problem. Uh, so you can pre-prepare the problem, bring it to the tutorial, have a discussion with your friends or your colleagues, should I say, your colleagues around the table, what would I change, whatever. get a debrief from your tutor about the problem, make sure you understand every aspect of what you have to think, and then write it up quite simply. Um, I think you can see that took me five to 10 minutes, right, for 5%, five to 10 minutes to writing it up. Once I understood, once I'd done the work, Five to 10 minutes, 5%. Mm, pretty good deal. But again, this is designed so that you pre-prepare, that you come and do this with your colleagues and you get most of the information you need to type up. You could even type it up in the tutorial. Okay. Now, okay, I miss a tutorial. What can I do? Hey, well, you could pre-prepare an answer and then watch a tutorial doing a correction and upload that. I don't think that's as good for you, but uh, we won't know if you've done it that way and we'll still mark it, okay? So that's what you can do there. The only other possible confusion about this is that like there's a problem in week five and there's a problem in week six. Do I need both of them? No, no, you choose one, put one up, okay? And we will mark that one. Of course, your tutor's there to give you feedback about whether you understand everything as we go through. But in terms of marking, we're going to mark one of the, the, the one that you put up, 
Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So I hope you can see that the problem set is kind of not a major issue. All you got to do is have a go at the problem, then reflect on what you got wrong and upload it the Friday, the last Friday of the two week period. So week six for weeks five and six, weeks eight for weeks seven and eight, 10 for nine and 10 and 12 for 11 and 12. And uh, hopefully we should do uh, quite well out of that problem set. Thank mm -hmm. you.